I am a member of the International Board, but also I have been a representative for UNESCO uh, during uh, seven, seven years, from 2004 to 2011, just to promote education for sustainable development uh, around, uh, yeah, in many countries around the world. I would like to start with uh, the conference in Rio, Rio Plus 20. And uh, from the document from this conference is named The Future We Want. And I think it's a very, very important document and uh, <coughs> where we can see that the leader, in, the leader in, at that summit, the uh, presidents and uh, prime ministers for almost uh, all nations in the world, they promised to, and they say, we resolve to improve the capacity of our education system to prepare people to pursue sustainable development, including through enhanced teacher training, the development uh, of sustainability curricula, and so on. And they also promised to promote education for sustainable development and to integrate sustainable development more actively into education beyond the United Nations decade of education for sustainable development. Um, this decade started the year 2005 and they have an end now in, uh, in November 2014. And they also said that we strongly encourage educational institutions to consider adopting good practices in sustainability management on their campuses and teaching sustainable development as an integrated component across disciplines. That these are the promises from the leader, the political level, but all of us realize that we as individual uh, citizens in all our countries, we have also a great, great responsibility. And it was this feeling of responsibility that made Rocky Carson write her highly controversial book, Silent Spring, 1962, in which she exposed the misleading reports of the agriculture industry and the unwillingness of the authorities to act. It was also this feeling of responsibility that enabled Mangare Matai to challenge the authorities in Kenya by organizing thousands of women in the Green Belt movement. She was awarded, as we know, 10 years ago, the Nobel Peace Prize for her, her work for sustainable development. And we remember that the Nobel Committee in Norway, they, they gave the, um, in their argument, they talk about her work with sustainable development, peace and democracy. It was also this feeling of responsibility that encouraged Malala Yousafzai, the youngest ever Nobel Peace Prize laureate, to promote education for girls and for women in her native Swat Valley in Pakistan. These three examples are three women, and all of them took their responsibility. And it is up to us now to take our responsibility to do what we can to promote sustainable development and education for sustainable development. And we have also to reflect on the, the conventional wisdom holds that all education is good, and more of it one has the better. The truth is that without significant precautions, it can equip people more to be more effective vandals on the earth. We, we have heard politicians, uh, Tony Blair said, education, education, education. We have said, seen uh, politicians here in Sweden also talk, uh, talk about education, education, education. But I think we have to reflect on what David Orr has said here. In Stockholm, we had the first international conference on the environmental issues. In June the 5th to the 16th 
of, of June 1972. And one of the recommendations was recommendation 96 on education. And we knew when they prepared this conference, they had six goals, six targets, uh, objectives for, uh, for the conference. And number three was education. And then we had, of course, Agenda 21 and Chapter 36. And in the Agenda 21, education is mentioned more than 400 times. So they realized in Rio 92 the importance of uh, education. And in fact, here in the Baltic Sea region, we, as someone said earlier, the Baltic 21 process started in 1996 with a, a meeting in Visby, and uh, it was to create an Agenda 21 in this region. And when they had started to investigate how to do that, this Baltic 21, they realized that they had missed education. So they completed with education, coming to uh, the Swedish ministry asking us, can we initiate a work? And here we see the preamble of the Earth Charter. The Earth Charter, you know about that. It was uh, a decision in year 2000. And uh, the background was the end use. All over the world has uh, worked together to create this uh, Earth Charter. And in the preamble, they say, we stand at a critical moment in Earth history, a time when humanity must choose its future. And there we are. And if we look upon some very, very basic facts, we have to realize this fact. A barrel of oil, 159 liter oil, accomplished as much work as 12 persons in hard labor for a whole year. Just one barrel. And then we have to reflect on that every day, 85 million barrels of oil is consumed. And this is equivalent to 250 billion human labors. We are around 9 billion human beings, and we dispose this energy equivalent with 250 billion, we can call it slaves or something like that. This is the situation to realize how important uh, how dependent we are on energy in form of uh, oil and uh, also coal uh, and, and so on. And we, have, we are now in the situation to limit the global warming to at most two degrees. We are not allowed to release more than another 565 billion tons of carbon dioxide. And if the results of coal, oil, and gas is used, this corresponds to at 3,000 billion tons. And 7,000 of these is owned by private companies. This is the situation we face. And here, close to us here, just uh, I think it's 200 meters out here, we have the Baltic Sea. Our common very vulnerable inland sea is in a very bad state, despite there has been done a lot of activities to make it cleaner, to make it fresher. But this is the situation. Nearly one-sixth of the Baltic Sea is dead. On an area that is the size of Denmark, there are no plants, animals and other organisms, and 30% of the bottom suffers of acute hypoxia. And also, in the mid, we are very close to the Arctic here. In the mid of April 2012, the extent of the sea ice in the Arctic was close to normal. On the 16th of September, just five, around five months later, measured only 3.4 million square kilometers of sea ice. It, there was a new lowest feature. And when compared, with the reference period, about half of the ice disappeared uh, this summer. 
These are two, two examples very close to us. And the fact is, when ice melts, more exposed dark ocean with then instead of reflect, absorb energy, which leads to heating and even more ice melts. The methane from the bottom of the sea is likely to leak into the atmosphere. And we know that this is a much more powerful greenhouse gas than uh, carbon dioxide. And we are in the situation, we have already now the, the climate change. Very, very clear. It causes, someone has uh, mentioned the figure, 400,000 deaths and million killed by air pollution. And we know, all of us sitting here, know that climate change is likely to lead to some irreversible impacts on biodiversity. Some, uh, one month ago, the 23rd of September, there was a summit in United Nations. Today we know it's United Nations Day. One month ago, they had a meeting there on climate change. And uh, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said, climate change is the defining issue of our age. It's defining our present. Our response will define our future. And this is what we have to do, to reduce the carbon dioxide to one to two tons per uh, person or capita within 40 years around. And these figures, USA uh, eight, uh, 18 tons, Sweden 10, and China 5 tons, perhaps it, is, it has changed. I know that United States some years ago had 22 on average. And ESD, Education for Sustainable Development, what is that? And we can say it is characterized, I will do it in a very, very, very short way here, uh, by the following feature. We try to get an interdisciplinary and, and uh, working methods. And also, it's extremely important that we get the students involved already from the preschool up on the uh, primary school up in secondary school university it is very very important to get the students themselves to participate in education the participatory working method is very important also to make education as reality based as possible with close and frequent contact with nature and society and also focus on problem solving and stimulate critical thinking. These are the main feature of uh, what we mean with, by education for sustainable development. Uh, when there was the meeting in Johannesburg, the Swedish Prime Minister at, uh, attended the meeting and he invited uh, to a conference in, in Gothenburg. We had this conference in the beginning of May 2004, named Learning to Change Our World. And at this conference, just in the beginning of this conference, our Prime Minister said, my intention is to go to the Swedish Parliament and change the law for the universities. So that we have in Sweden since the 1st of February 2006, the Higher Education Act that stipulates that universities and university colleges have to, in their activities, uh, promote sustainable development that ensures present and future generations a healthy and good environment, economic and social welfare and justice. It is written in a Swedish law, uh, 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 Swedish law words here. And then the Swedish government, the, the former Swedish government that was uh, in power up to 2006, was led by a prime minister that was strongly committed for sustainable development, really. He showed it in different ways. And one of the suggestions he raised was to establish an institute here at Gotland. It was, uh, and then he lost the election, 2006. The new government reflected on that during one year and then they decided to follow the recommendation from the former to establish this sweetest here. So today we have Eva Freeman here. Uh, she will be the leader of sweetest uh, this institute starting from uh, 1st of November. 
Franz Langlet has been here. Oh, Franz is there, okay. <laughs> Franz is still one week the head of uh, Sweden. And Swedish is now part of Uppsala University. So we are very, very proud of Sweden and happy that it was uh, established here in Gotland. And uh, what we have also in common is that uh, all our uh, nations are member of United Nations Economic Commission for Europe. And they had a meeting in Kiev in Ukraine in May 2003, where they took the first statement on education for sustainable development within the framework of United Nations Economic Commission for Europe. And then they have a very, very good strategy. Perhaps none of you have studied that already, but I can recommend it, as I think it's the best strategy on education for sustainable development. And one of idea that is very important also to create what we call regional center of expertise. The idea was present first time in, in, in Germany, 2001, by the rector, Hans van Ginkel, rector for United Nations uh, University. And uh, they created what they called an Ubuntu committee that has to, to uh, recognize the applications from different parts of the world on creating regional center of expertise. A regional center of expertise, there are now 100, around 130 ones. And this is a center where one or two or three universities cooperate with each other, but also cooperate with upper secondary school, primary schools, botanical gardens, and so on, to promote education for sustainable development. And in Sweden we had we got the first RCE in year 2007 in, in Skåne. And now in December we will inaugurate also in Uppsala uh, the R, uh, RCE Uppsala. And there is ESPO where West Sweden are and so on. This is a very brilliant idea that I have recommended in an article in Bo uh, Baltic University's newspaper a uh, newsletter. Uh, uh, in June this year, try to look upon uh, the United Nations uh, University's homepage to read more about, uh, to, to create regional centers, to, to cooperate with the surrounding society, to strengthen education for sustainable development in preschools, uh, primary schools, upper secondary schools, universities, and so on. In November, uh, within some, some weeks, this year we will have the UNESCO World Conference on Education for STEM in Nagoya, Japan, and this will mark the end of the decade. But the decade will be followed by what we call a global action program uh, on ESD. So we hope and uh, that this conference will be um, a success, and uh, many people say that the UN decade, compared with other UN decade, says that the decade on education for sustainable development really have been a success, has been an excess. It is difficult to, to know, but of course, uh, all of us who have been involved in the promoting of ESD have wished uh, much uh, better results, but okay, compared with other United Nations. Uh, I just to, to see. But uh, here are uh, the recommendations to the Swedish delegation. And, uh, and in, the, in Sweden, we, uh, we have had now, during eight years, uh, to be very, very honest, a government, a cabinet that has very, been very little interested in education for sustainable development, not promoting that from the top. But from the bottom, there has been a lot of activities by uh, scientists to promote education for students. So we, we have from the, uh, worked on the bottom up when we couldn't get uh, that support that we wished from uh, the top. But now I believe uh, that the new three ministers in the Ministry of Education 
all of them has announced that they are very interested in education for sustainable development. And Sweden will now send a delegation to Nagoya, to Japan, to, to work with this issue. And we have been, and Franz and Eva has been very, very deeply involved to, to prepare this uh, meeting in Nagoya from the Swedish point of view. And here are what we recommend everyone, and you have also in your country to, to reflect on that, to develop a national action plan for ESD, to include ESD in school laws, and uh, in a similar way that's all done in the higher education, and also instruct national agencies to school to strengthen and broaden the support, and instruct the university chancellor board to observe and evaluate how higher education acts formulation is applied in practice on universities. Encourage universities and use and private companies to conduct staff training with sustainable development in mind. And also to encourage teacher education. Teacher education is of extremely importance. We are, who are member of the European Union knows that the, our education minister has taken a decision on uh, education for sustainable development within the teacher education. Just to stress how important it is to get these ideas on education for sustainable development within the teacher education. And uh, we are, as we know also, we have this, this post-2015 uh, process and uh, it, uh, it started in uh, Rio uh, year 2012, and there's been different groups, but one of the, and now I believe the only big group is the United Nations General Assembly Open Working Group. And they have recently, in July, proposed uh, uh, 17 goals with 169 targets uh, covering a broad range of sustainable development issues. And goal number four is to ensure inclusive and equitable equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. You see this is a very, very broad scope. But it is here now on the agenda to, uh, to uh, among the sustainable goals. And now I will conclude. I, believe, I, th I think that the political will and responsible leadership for tackling the major challenges facing humanities in all our countries can only be created by well-informed and well-educated public opinion. It is the strength of our democracy. And also to realize that the national education sector is often the biggest and most important sector in countries. Only by making full use of this enormous potential by reorienting it. We're talking about that in Rio also, already in 1992, to reorient the education system. By reorienting this sector, it is possible to be successful in the struggle for sustainable development. And ESD is particularly important in the wealthy part of the world with the Western lifestyle a lifestyle that means that we are making by far the largest ecological footprint. And reducing large ecological footprint will really require ESD. And now, as we have said, we know the challenges facing humankind are greater than ever and make our promotion of ESD more and more important. We have to use every means of securing powerful political support for ESD in the international community also after the decade. And we have to realize that UNESCO has not resources themselves. Is it up to our nations, our nation's government to support this education for sustainable development? Thank you for your attention.